Well, guys, from what I understand, I'm in style right now. I got a tail dragger. Keith just sent this. We're going to take a quick look at it, see what we got here. Yeah, that's going to be great. I'll just take and round that up. So I got to put a pull hole in this, and it's going to be pretty deep. We have a quarter inch hole here. which is four and seven sixteenths deep. And my calipers are, yeah, I can get across it. We got about a half inch here. I can go down with the drill through that hole and tap it out, which slides right through that hole. I'm gonna drill the hole almost to the bottom. And then from there, we will run this tap on down. I'm not using a, a flat bottom tap though, see that. I'm going to put that on the grinder and blunt that. This material is brittle. I really like it. I'm not knocking it at all. It isn't forgiving like wood or plastics. I'm about right there. We have one eighth of an inch before we break into that. All right. So I kept that hole pretty much concentric all the way down in there. As I extended it and I did not break out. You have to pre-drill and machine it. Because if you don't, it will chip out on you. And that way I can just freehand it here. All the way down. So I think that that stopped. We've got a thread down in the bottom of that, so I'll be able to use my pull tool. Give you guys what kind of uh, temperature I'm dealing with today. I'll bet those Kansas cattle couldn't handle this building right now. It is tough. <laughs> I'm moving slow as a snail. Now, I've already done this one time just to go through it. The dowel pin was stuck in this piece. Because of the lettering here, there's some very fine lettering. I want to put this down. It will be flipped upside down in the drag. I had a little bit of sand stick right in that. Put just a little bit of dust on it. And this is just absorb any moisture, guys. That's, it's not for the finish. It's just to help dry this pattern out. I'm going to leave the dowel pin out and ram that with sand because that's not going to let it set flat if I try to do it like that. I have to dig it back out when I flip it over and put the pin in and then put the mating piece on. I'm going to start off with my facing sand. I'm going to put a ring around it and feed it from four points. Boy, this muller has been giving me fits. And the humidity is not helping us any either. It is terrible out here today. I just want that on the very face. I'm not worried about the perpendicular surfaces. Then we'll cover it with this next level of sand. So the rest of that's going to be machined. I'm running this overhead light for visibility for you guys, and I hope we don't get attacked by those bugs. Man, they are bad tonight.
There is sand stuck in these little registration holes. I need to blow that out or I will have fits trying to put that cope on it. You always use three parts water and one part air. Now we've got to dig this registration hole out. Mr. Pete gave me this bellow. And you know, I was thinking, I'm never going to use this. <laughs> it is perfect for this because as you guys know, I have water all in the air system. I don't have to worry about blowing water all over the thing with that. All right. Before I get started, I want to cut some keys in there just to minimize mismatch. Press it down a little bit in there. And that way my cope, when I take the patterns out right now, it's not going to be a problem because, because of the alignment of that. But once you take them out of there, you don't you're fully dependent on these registration pins, which are pretty accurate. But if you really want to fine tune your accuracy on eliminating mismatch, keying it is always a good way to go. It's been a very busy day. I'm gonna just put a, a pipe riser right here. Said I'm just worried about the face here and that rolled radius. So glad to get my shower tonight. This is the fourth shirt I have changed into today. <laughs> Same pair of pants, but uh, you know, if I if the pants come off, I'm jumping in the shower, and I just didn't feel I I didn't want to waste the day away taking four showers. I got me a new shovel. The other one disappeared. Found it since. I always do after I buy another one, right? Josie had it out there and out there around the uh, cast iron pile. I don't know why. So I got two of them now. You know what? I am going to ram it really hard. Right, right there. Since I am I'm gonna put a pipe riser right in the middle. Gate it right here. Now, as I said in another video not too long ago, see how it's cracking right there? When I get ready to put my pouring base in there, I want that super hard. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna make a big circle. But we will come in right here, right here, here, and here. Okay. I'm going to bring it in kind of close to the pattern at the depth of the runner. Prevent anything from freezing off. Now, as I said, <laughs> this is going to be kind of tight. I'm going to hand dig a filter trap right here. And all that is, that's just a little bit higher ground. And i got to be careful here because my pouring basin, which is coming in from the other side, it's going to be right here, so I don't want to take a chance of breaking into this, right? And then... Let's 
It's going to rake a little radius there. So the iron is going to come through that hole down here, hit here, and then it's going to fill. <laughs> I messed up. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't know why I did. The, yeah, overlook that, guys. We are working with the drag here, so there's not going to be a trap in the drag. Any contaminants are going to float up. They're not going to sink to the bottom. So I messed you up there. All right, so on the coat, we're going to hand cut a little filter trap about in this area right here. Let's see if I can just, we've already wrapped this. Let me see if I can gently pull on it through these gates that I cut. Now this is the piece that has the lettering in it, so I'm going, I'm going to gently Turned out all right. Yeah, that's going to look good. All right, so I'm going to dust this because I've got to go in and brush those gates. I've got to brush them back. I don't want that sharp edge there. I want it to radius in there. So let's huff and puff. I'm going to go ahead and dig this trap. And as I said earlier, my pouring basin is going to be pretty, pretty good size. It's going to come down. I don't want to go beyond this depth right here. That's good enough. This is the one that I got a little thread going down there in, in the bottom. I'm going to tighten snug that up just a little bit. And as I said, we're going to put a pipe riser in here. I just sprayed water in there. The reason for that, it will keep that sand from crumbling so bad right up here where I'm fixing a punch in. You see that? All right, you see how crisp that line is after I sprayed a little water in there? That, that kept that clay moist and didn't let it crumble when I pushed that riser in. So I'm gonna have to torch that. 
right? I gotta, I gotta dry it back out now that I've done that. And once I dry it out, I'm gonna brush a radius at the intersect of that pipe riser uh, where I don't have any shrinkage right in that corner. You don't want a sharp corner there. Just in case I got water out here, we'll dry that out too. Let's see if I can do this with just this handle here. Yeah. I'm going to concentrate this more in this direction. Radius on the inside there. Feels right. Showing you this big boy. I got chills all over me. <laughs> I had a very close personal experience just a few minutes ago as I was face to face with this thing. Uh, I'm not big on snakes. I hate the things. But uh, anyway, 
Uh, it, we both can't be out here tonight. I, I can't. Uh -uh. It, it just keeps going on and on and on. There's no end to it. All right, guys, I'm fixing to cut these off and grind those with the 12-inch uh, straight edges. I got 14 at a time that I'm doing because that's as many as I can put in the kiln at one time, the stress relief. And then as I get those cooking, then I can get to grinding another 14. I got behind on my quota, which is nothing new. I always need to wear a glove when I'm doing this or when I'm holding the cast. All right, that pop. There we go. Now I'm going to use my cutoff wheel to, to cut this off. Ouch. That's why I wear gloves. Alright, I'm just going to lightly kiss the nose of that, clean them up. Well guys, this is the two castings and then this is the, the pattern here. Uh, the lettering is legible on that side and then you turn it around here and you got a letter Q and two. And over here on this casting, the lettering and this is, of course, this is the uh, the pattern itself. So to give you guys an idea of the V 
finish that I get, maybe that will give you a better idea. All right, guys. Uh, I can't think of a better way to end this video than to include my lovely niece. She is my model for my hat, by the way. Her name is Chloe. Hey. Okay. Oh, come on. Say it. Say it a little louder. With hey. A... There you go. She is actually a very talkative uh, young lady. Anyway, we are going to show you these castings now that they have come out of stress relief. They look great. This is the casting on both sides, and it turned out really well. Now, I did have some weird stuff going on in the very middle because of the solidification with that riser being right over it, that pipe riser. It's not going to hurt a thing. Keith's going to be drilling and boring that part out, so it's not going to make a bit of difference. The detail, as I showed you uh, yesterday before the stress relief, still shows up really nice on both of them. Chloe, go ahead and pick up the other one and put it right there, too. Show them that side of it. Yeah. So, and this is the other one, and Chloe, if you can kind of roll it back, just right there, hold it right there. Now, you guys see what I'm talking about, about these little pits. But anyway, I'm fixing to package these and get them on. And I want to thank my lovely niece for uh, being able to d demonstrate this for us today, because it's always nice to have a fresh face in the videos. I wanted to say something about, to explain my good looks, it, it runs in a family. But anyway, Chloe, thank you. And You're we will. Welcome. So, guys, we are going to get these shipped and uh, get them packaged, and hopefully, Keith will be able to machine these sometime next week. The flashing in these holes uh, used to be a very big deal, and Sooner has supplied me with rotary stones for the die grinder that eat that stuff right up and really speed up my productivity on that part. I'm still slow, but not as slow as I used to be, thanks to these guys. Every little bit helped. Check out their products if you're interested. I'm going to give you the contact info along with their number. If you see anything you're interested in, be sure and tell them I sent you. Uh, they have been very good to me. One of the issues that really holds things up out here is grind time. And I try not to uh, go overboard with it. I try to do just what I'm supposed to but every once in a while you run into one where some edge broke off in the mold and you end up having to grind a lot of flashing out. The casting will be great but you're going to have a lot more material there that you have to remove than normal and with their wheels they are very aggressive. They cut fast and they leave a very good finish. Well, that snake ain't here right now. I'm not taking any chances. I got a whole bunch of snake away. I'm going to throw all over this build, and it's going to look like it snowed in here. My lucky's up in my leathers. For those who have been asking about the Windy Hill Foundry hats, these are now available on my website, windyhillfoundry.com, under stores, or you can click on the above link. These are on the pricey side, but keep in mind the shipping is included. Have a good day.